going back to an idea that Stephen said earlier that once you articulate it, you can address it more. I, I think this is what many students with the with intersexual identities are going through is that they don't quite know where the attack and the stress is coming from, mm -hmm. um, and therefore they don't know how to address it. Right? Do you do you like actively seek economic help? Do you look for another social community online? Um, and I found that part of my role, you know, especially in teaching in public health systems and structures, and for those of you who teach in higher ed and psych, I imagine it's very similar, um, is to show them like these are the different paths that lead to our intersectional oppression, right? This is where um, why many of our communities are let, uh, have lower income. This is why there's more undocumented folks in our communities. Um, this is how oppression is shaped for different folks. And when they are able to see themselves in this historic position, right? So um, they see themselves as, as part of a larger immigration narrative, for example, instead of someone, uh, and I'll give an example. One of my students said, uh, my uncle used to work in the fields or picking, uh, picking uh, fruit and he would pass out because it was so hot, right? And she's mm -hmm. like, and I just thought it was, you know, he just had a low heat tolerance and it was really hot. And you know, I gave her this book, uh, They Leave Their Kidneys in the Fields, about heat stroke in the fields. And she realized like, oh, this is systematic, it has to do with OSHA. And while it didn't necessarily make her feel better about her uncle's relation or situation specifically, um, part of her self-care, part of her healing was addressing that system, right? And I think, uh, you know, to summarize, to the extent that we can be intersectional people, right, and, and rich and, and, and beautiful, but define the systems that oppress us very carefully and take them apart systematically. Um, I think it, it's, it's helpful for students. And it's actually, I would say, a good part of self-care that I wish we would engage more, right, both this advocacy against what oppresses us and for people of privilege. Can you imagine if everyone of privilege had their self-care day was acknowledging their privilege and addressing what they gained unjustly from it, right? This would be a very different model of self-care in a very different world.